Okay. In this video, we'll be grading our quiz. Number one, key in on the question sentence. What is the independent quantity? Well, I hope you remembered our phrase, the independence on the inside. Okay, if not that, remember that independent is the x. In, in this situation, you know this b of n, that's the y, that's the output quantity. Our independent quantity is n here. n is independent. Independent. And n represents the number of students. Number one is f. One is f. Number two. <clears throat> What is the best estimate of a positive value of x for which the function equals negative 5? We're looking for an x. We're looking for an x, so they must be giving us a y. The y they're giving us is negative 5. Okay. The question is, what x produces a y of negative 5? So come to y being negative 5. That's right here. And you see that it's approximately there. So it looks like 4 pairs with negative 5. 4 pairs with negative 5. The correct answer on number 2 is B. 2 is B. Number 3. It says, based on the graph between which two values of x is a 0 located? Hopefully you remember 0 is an x-intercept. Okay. Specifically, it's the function value that maps to zero, but graphically we can think of it as an x-intercept. Well, we have two x-intercepts on this quadratic. One is here between four and five. One is over here between negative one and negative two. Between four and five. Three. Question three. The answer is D. All right. Number four. We are looking for the perimeter. It tells us it's 65. Well, per perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So I'm simply going to add up all these sides. 3x minus 4. 3x. Plus 2x. Plus 2. Plus x. Plus 2x plus 2. Plus 2x. And I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, all six sides. This sum is equal to 65. Now we will combine like terms. 3x plus 3x is 6x, 8x, 9x, 11x, 13x. 13x. Negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2 plus two more, that's zero. So we have 13x is equal to 65. Dividing by 13 on both sides, x is five. Number four is b. Number five. Five asks, what is the range? Well, range is the output. You see here it's negative 3, 1, 2, 3, so forth. 5 is B. 5B is in boy. Number 6. Which expression represents the area in square units of a rectangle? Well, area of a rectangle is length times width. They're giving us the length as 10 x to the third, y to the fourth, and they've given us a width of 5x squared y. So this product, 10 times 5 is 50. Remember, when multiplying, we add exponents. So x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. y to the fourth times y to the first, 4 and 1 is y5. The correct answer on number 6. 50x5y5, five 5, 6 is j. 
All right. Number seven. Seven. We're looking for the range. Know that the range are the y values. So we want to consider the vertical maximum and the vertical minimum. This point here is four comma three. The point down here at the bottom is negative two negative three. Okay, and we're considering the range. That those are the y's. So our range is from three to negative three, from negative three to three, but negative three is a closed point. We need an equal to. Positive three is our open point. Thus, positive three will be a strictly less than, negative three will have the equal to with it. First of all, range being y, we can certainly eliminate a and b, the two x's. We know it's going to be from negative 3 to 3, where negative 3 gets the equal, but positive 3 does not because of the open point. 7 is D. All right. Number 8. It says the slope and y-intercept of the line y equals 3x plus 9 are both divided by negative 3 to create a new line. Which line represents the new one? Well, if I divide both of these by negative 3, I would get y equals 3 divided negative 3 is a negative 1x. 9 divided negative 3 is a negative 3. You could certainly graph this in your calculator and match it up, but I think we can solve this without doing that. I see the y-intercept is negative 3. That eliminates C. That eliminates A. B has a y-intercept of negative 3. D has a y-intercept of positive 3. So the only one with a y-intercept of negative 3, that is B. A is B. Number nine. Which of the following is a correct interpretation of the function? The altitude of a helicopter can be represented by the function h equals, you can think of h as the height, 18s, s is the number of seconds, subtract 30. Okay. So what we're saying is if we substitute some value of seconds into this function, it will output some value of height. All right. 18 is the slope. Negative 30 is the y-intercept. Okay. After taking off, the helicopter rises at a rate of 18 feet per second. That looks good. That's the slope. Okay. I think A is correct. B, the helicopter is falling at a rate of 30 feet per, per second. No, that's the y-intercept. Definitely not B. The training exercise takes a total of 18 seconds. No, 18 is the rate. The height of the helicopter increases every 18 seconds and then decreases for 30 seconds. No, it's 18 feet per second. That's how we interpret the slope here. A is indeed the correct answer. 9 is A. Number 10, which expression is equivalent to g to the a times g to the b divided by g to the c? Well, hopefully you remember when we multiply, we add exponents. So this numerator would be g to the a plus b divided by g to the c. Well, when we divide, we subtract. So the final expression is going to be a plus b minus c. And indeed, 10 says that. Final question, number 11. We are looking for the domain, and domain we know is x. So we want to consider how far left and right the graph goes. This point here that is open is 6, negative 1. The point to the far left, also open, is negative 3, 5. We're considering the domain, the x, 
it goes from negative 3 to positive 6. From negative 3 to positive 6, and we do not need an equal to portion because they both have empty circles. From negative 3 to positive 6, 11 is G. 11 is G. All right. You can now find your um, grade. Count the number that you got correct. Obviously, if you got all of them, 0 will map to 100. Count the number you got incorrect, I should say. If you got missed none, you will get a 100. If you missed one, you will get a 94. And there will be six points apiece thereafter. If you missed two, you will have an 88. If you missed three, you will have an 82. Dot, dot, dot. All right, so simply six times the number that you missed, subtract from 100, that is your grade.